Skywatch Media News for the third week of January 2022. Recent models of how stars are formed have emphasized in the strongest terms that most stars are born in a litter with at least one companion. Our own star at the center of the solar system is no exception, and astronomers suspect that our sun's estranged twin may in fact be responsible for the sudden extinction of the dinosaurs. In the year 2017, researchers from UC Berkeley and the Harvard Astrophysical Observatory analyzed data from a radio survey of a dust cloud from the Perseus constellation, and they concluded that all sun-like stars are most likely born with a companion. A series of statistical models were run of both single stars and binaries in the Perseus molecular cloud and the only model that could reproduce the data was the one in which all stars initially form as wide binaries. For many years, astronomers had speculated as to whether the binary system of stars in our galaxy were created close to one another or came closer to one another after their formation. The born-together hypothesis was the most reliable, and simulations in recent decades has shown that almost all stars are not born alone, but in pairs that often spin away on their own. As part of the researchers' survey, they mapped the radio wave outflow from a dense cocoon of dust about 600 light-years away that contained numerous young stars in the formation process. The survey allowed for a census of stars that are younger than half a million years, referred to as class zero stars, or infants in star terms. The rest of the survey included stars a bit older, between half a million and a million years, and referred to them as class one. The data from the shapes of the surrounding cloud of dust determined that there were a total of 45 single stars, 19 binary star systems, and five that contain more than two stars. Although the data was unable to provide absolute evidence that all stars were born as binaries, it did show that most stars are formed within the dense cores of dust clouds that are born with a companion. By looking closely at the gap between the stars, the researchers found that all binaries separated by a distance of 500 AU or more fell into the class zero category where they lined up with the axes of the egg-shaped cloud that surrounded them. In comparison, the Class I stars, which are the older stars, were much closer together, a distance of about 200 astronomical units, and they were not aligned with the egg axis. The findings are quite extraordinary, but if most suns are born with a companion, as the Vandom survey suggests, then where is our companion sun? If we think about a separation distance of 500 AU for the younger stars, that figures to be roughly about 0.008 light years, or just under three light days separation. If put into perspective, planet Neptune is about 30 AU distance from us, whereas the Voyager 1 probe is slightly under 140 AU distance and the nearest known star, Proxima Centura, is nearly 269,000 AU distance, the equivalent of 4.24 light-years distance. So if our sun has a twin, it would be virtually invisible to the naked eye. Nevertheless, there is an hypothesis that our sun does indeed have a twin that swings by in the direction of the Oort cloud every now and then, causing havoc to the planets of our solar system. Given its name, Nemesis, it is theorized that the troublemaker is responsible for the apparent 27 million year cycle of extinctions on this planet, including the one that led to the demise of the dinosaurs.
Over the past four decades, it has been proposed by a number of theorists that a companion star, possibly in the company of orbiting planets, is drawing near to the outer edges of our solar system, which could explain many of the peculiar and unprecedented anomalies that are happening at this time. As far-fetched as this may seem to some observers, an astronomer from UC Berkeley, Richard Muller, proposed some 37 years ago that a red dwarf star one and a half light years away could periodically travel through the dark limits of our solar system, stirring up a great deal of material with its gravitational pull, thereby knocking out a few big space rocks in the direction of Earth. A dim brown dwarf star could also explain the anomalies at the fringes of our solar system, such as the peculiar elongated orbit of the dwarf planet Sedna. Although there is no sign of a nemesis today, there likely was some time ago, and a long-lost companion for our sun fits the bill in which case our sun must have taken the biggest share of dust and gas, thereby leaving its companion dark and stunted. On January 12th, an official report released by NOAA indicates that the sunspot count for the new solar cycle 25 is now outperforming the official forecast. The new sunspot count has now exceeded predictions for the past 15 straight months, the monthly value at the end of December of last year was more than twice the forecast, and the highest in more than five years. Using a variety of leading indicators, the Solar Cycle Prediction Panel predicted that Solar Cycle 25 would peak in July of 2025 as a weak cycle, similar to Solar Cycle 24. Instead, it is shaping up to be much stronger. The changes are being noticed already. Its effects are being seen on the ground in the Arctic, where auroras are presently at their best in many years. The indicators are showing that geomagnetic activity has nearly tripled since the beginning of the new cycle. In 2020, during the fir first full year of Solar Cycle 25, there were nine days where a G1 magnetic storm was observed. That number skyrocketed to 25 last year. On November the 4th, 2021, a G4 class event took place, where auroras were observed as far south as California and New Mexico. Another sign of increased solar activity is the X-flare, which can cause strong radio blackouts, can spread energetic particles across the Earth's atmosphere, and can produce intense geomagnetic storms. During the period of late 2017 until mid-2021, there were no X-class flares produced by the Sun. But then on July the 3rd, 2021, the Sun unleashed an X 1.6 category explosion, which was followed by an X1 flare on October the 28th. As a result of the increased solar activity, the cosmic radiation is decreasing from its historically high values which were recorded in the year 2020. Typically in the 11-year cycle, we could expect to see more than 100 X-flares during the period around solar max. So as solar cycle in 25 intensifies, keep your eyes open, as this cycle could get very interesting. In the realm of our earthly existence, we look to the mountains and call them eternal, for so they seem. But in the course of time, mountains rise and fall, rivers change their course, stars fall from the sky, and great cities sink beneath the sea. So let it be written that all things will change. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching, and always, Keep looking to the sky.